One of the quickest and easiest ways to figure out who you are and what you really want is to understand what you don't want, is to understand who you are not. Now for me, personally, how I came to understand this was looking back on the majority of my life, through a lot of my life, being, around, being surrounded by people I didn't like, doing things I didn't like to do, in ways that I didn't like to do them. And I'm sure you've had many experiences of the same nature. Now there's two things we can do with this. We can sit here complacent and complain about the fact that, oh, I didn't like this, I didn't like that, I hated school, I hated this, and just complain and be stuck. Or we can take the more proactive approach, the more intelligent and evolutionary approach and say, well, what was the lesson there? Well, that contrast taught you the preference or doing all the things I didn't like to do taught me that I didn't like to do them for one and was functioning as a springboard for me to understand what I did want and what I did like to do. And I will tell you that one of the easiest ways to figure out what you want is to understand what you don't want. Because oftentimes people might ask you, oh, well, what do you want? Or you might ask yourself, what do you want? And you just draw a blank. You know, maybe nothing comes to mind. Some people operate this way. So for these people and for this situation, the easiest thing to do is to say, okay, well, what, what don't I want? What do I want to avoid? What do I dislike? What makes me irritable and angry and upset? And then from there, you can just flip it to the opposite. So maybe you don't like really loud, crowded situations where you feel kind of closed in and claustrophobic. Okay, well, what's the opposite of that? Quiet, open spaces with plenty of room to breathe and move and function. Okay. There it is. Now you know exactly what you do want based on understanding what you don't want. And I think ultimately when we look back on the course of our lives, many of our experiences that were so-called negative were functioning in this manner to teach us. And so many of these things that we look back on and label as negative were really functioning to calibrate our preferences and help us to grow further and move forward with our lives. So to relate back to my own life, I really disliked school from, I remember just going to school in kindergarten and just crying and screaming and just begging to not go because I just didn't want to do it. And I basically had that same attitude from kindergarten till the day I graduated high school. The day I graduated high school, I basically just got my diploma, did the silly little hat thing, and then as soon as it was over, just really walked right out the back door and was done with it just because I hated getting up early, I hated sitting in a class having someone who was much older and in most cases not any smarter if not I was more smarter than them telling me what I should do and how I should do it and telling me that I was wrong and all these things and you know that's just not how I wanted to be treated, it's not situations that I wanted to be in. It, I don't like, it taught me that I don't like these hierarchies and I don't like these artificial things that we have to put in place and at the time I didn't really understand the function and was just kind of resisting it as teenagers do but I learned many important lessons in how to relate to people, how to educate, how to be educated and I always knew that I loved to learn but hated school. Uh, it taught me that things that I, were inter that I were interested and passionate about I could learn about thousands and thousands of times faster than anyone could ever teach in a schoolroom, and it's just having someone move at this slow pace and talk about things that aren't important taught me that a in any given context in any given subject in any given field philosophy paradigm most of it is going to be fluff and you can just kind of cast away a lot of the things but within everything there's an essential important truth there's <clears throat> sorry about that I'm uh having a little breakfast here. Within everything there are essentials, there are core truths that you can just go right for those and within those everything else is encoded. Those are the foundational axioms. So it's silly to just dance around on all the branches and the leaves when you can just go to the root immediately and figure all the rest out. And you know it took me 12 years of hating school, hating the educational process to really come out of the end and realize that I wasn't stupid it's just I hated, A, learning things that I didn't care about and had no use, no value, and no practical approach, and that I didn't like that style. 
So that's just one example of how all of that stuff that I didn't like just taught me what I did like, taught me who I, who I was, who I wanted to be, who I needed to be, and who I was at the core. You know, and it was only through this contrast, it was only through this discord that I could really even know that I was there. And I think Terrence McKenna has a quote that the only way to really know that consciousness is there is to perturb it, is to agitate it in some way. Because, you know, we, we all fall into just, you know, states of lull or just this dull state of numbness. So we need, you know, sometimes to be pushed or we need contrast in some way to kind of actually make us get up off our butt and do something and make a change and make an effort <clears throat> and do the work and look in the mirror and ask ourselves, who am I and what do I want? And ultimately, those are the two most important questions you can ever ask yourself. Two most important questions to repeatedly and <clears throat> regularly and annually ask yourself in every context, your relationships, your business, your job, your health, your spirituality, your exercise program, whatever it is, you know, it always comes back to those two questions. And unless you're clear on those two questions, you're going to project on the other people, you're going to attract situations that are going to perturb your consciousness in a way to wake you up and make you see that, hey, you're ignoring this, or hey, this is who you really are, or hey, you're not doing this right, or hey, you need to do this, you need to change this, let go of that. So the more we can ask ourselves these questions and look in the mirror and get answers and focus and dig in and do this real foundational homework, the more we'll actually feel, feel fulfilled and happy and feel like we're on purpose and we're on our path and our life has meaning and value and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And again, one of the easiest ways to answer all of these questions is to look at what we don't want and look at who we are not and look at the contrast, appreciate the contrast, realize that it has value, realize that it has a purpose, and not try to have the world only up without down and realize that we're living in a dualistic universe with good and bad, hot, cold, positive, negative, male and female, and that this contrast serves us. And without this contrast, nothing would exist, nothing could exist. So that is how to figure out who you are and what you want. If you have any questions or comments, post them below and I will talk to you soon.